and they are people who either by a personal inclination, a spiritual calling, or rarely but occasionally a parental selection, live to assume the roles of the opposite and sometimes their own gender roles. And when the Europeans came over, they actually gave them a more offensive name called um, Berdachis, and um, it was kind of just a way to offend them because it means male prostitute, which is not what they were, but yeah. And so um, the way it worked is at a certain age, generally around eight or so, a child would announce what gender, what gender they wished to live as, and from that point on, their parents would raise them as that gender. They had a whole like spiritual thing or a ritual thing where they were bathed and given clothing and then they were allowed to announce their new names. And once they had gone through this ceremony, they were allowed to completely and fully live in society as their chosen gender. And so the, the men would become hunters and then the women would stay home and take care of kids. And yeah, it's a, it's a cool idea. And so, um, yeah. If you're anything like some of the people in my family, you're probably wondering why would we care about underdeveloped, not Western countries' genders. And that's because gender variance actually exists in our country. And because of our binary, these people aren't accepted and they end up suffering quite a bit. Um, like, our society has, over time, it's become more accepting of gender nonconformance, but it has, it has limits. Like, um, for um, let's see, for women, like it's okay for women to dress more masculine, and we got to a point where we can say like, okay, women can't have short hair. But then on the other side, like I could come to school wearing a t-shirt and jeans and no one would say anything. But if a man came to school wearing like a skirt or something, that would just be completely not okay. And yeah, so that's not good. Okay, and then these. Okay, um, that, sorry, wasn't ready. Um, so, the way our society has changed is people are slowly starting to learn about um, some non-binary and non-gender conforming people, and children who don't conform to typical gender stereotypes are becoming more recognized and accepted, and um, they're not but through sometimes the um, corrective stuff they used to. And then, um, yeah, the, I, the way we could start to move towards more acceptance would be, I guess, mainly education, because most people that you talk to don't know about any of this stuff, and they don't even realize the binary is a problem. Um, so yeah, I'll end this on a cool note. Okay, this guy. He uh, lives in uh, New Jersey, and he is a self-identified cross-dresser. And he, when it was his prom, he wished he wanted to wear a dress and skirt. And the school said, no, you can't do that. And so what happened was the students at the school got, got, got a petition together, and they um, protested. And he ended up being allowed to, which was cool. And so he was allowed to bring his girlfriend, because surprise, he's straight. And um, while wearing a dress and heels, and he actually ended up winning prom queen that night, and it's a cool story. And then you can't see any of this because I messed that up. But they were pictures of gender non conforming people, and the one in the upper right was a thing that DC did to help fix it. Okay, thank you for listening. <laughs>